chapter 1. If you know anything much about your Bible, you know that the Apostle Paul, inspired of God, wrote to the young preacher Timothy. And these are the last two books, uh, uh, Second Timothy before was before he was killed. So the last thing Paul said to the young preacher uh, that was going to carry on the ministry was what is in Second Timothy and here in First Timothy. This is special instruction to preachers. Now, I just read this the other day, and I saw, never seen this before, that the word doctrine is mentioned, I think, eight, eight times, uh, nine times in the book of 1 Timothy. More than any other book in the Bible, the word doctrine is mentioned in 1 Timothy. And it's only six chapters. I mean, Genesis has 50. Luke has 20, uh, one or two, whatever. Matthew has 28. Exodus has 40. So, uh, Psalms has 150. 1 Timothy has six chapters, and the word doctrine is more in that book than any other book in the Bible. That tells me the Holy Ghost is telling the young preacher, as we near the end of the age, and near, make sure you got your doctrine straight. Sound doctrine. For the Bible said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Proof. And uh, people today are getting into some weird doctrine. And you have, the only way you can get your doctrine right is study, and you have to be in the right spirit and rightly divide the word of truth. You should never, ever base your doctrine on an obscure verse that you can't hardly understand anyway. You base your doctrine on church epistles and then everything else fits. You got to know where you're at. You got to know where you're at. Uh, for example, why don't we bring, why don't we bring animal sacrifices to the altar anymore? Why don't we do that? The Bible says to do it. We know God wasn't talking. You start saying that, people say, oh, you're a dispensationalist. You're absolutely right. I sure am. And if you're not, you are a Bible messed up nut. That's what you are. You're a nut. There is no way it can all be the same to everybody in every age. It just ain't. It just is not. That's why we're not building a boat. Uh, we're not in Noah's day commanded by God to build a boat. God deals with different people, different ways, in different periods of time, and you call that period of time a dispensation. And if you don't get that right, you're going to come out believing all kinds of crazy stuff. And b before, before fall, I hope, I hope, I'm going to be bringing you some, uh, some, some messages on uh, what I call the uh, emerging church and the modern church movement and how they get off. And you know how they get off? Most of them, they believe that everything God said to Israel, we now take to the church. And every promise that God made about the kingdom, that we are now in the kingdom. This kingdom gospel philosophy is a bunch of nuts that don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Now tonight, we're going to look here at what Paul told the young man Timothy, and I want to bring you a short message on that. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, amen, who hath enabled me. I like that right there. He hath enabled me. He's given me the ability to do what I'm doing. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. You know what Paul said? Paul said, I did not choose the ministry. I was chosen for the ministry. I didn't decide to be a preacher. The Lord counted me faithful and put me in the ministry. I want to preach on that word tonight. But he counted me faithful. He counted me faithful. I would like to think. I would like to know. I would like to believe as life goes on that the Lord counted me faithful and putting me into the ministry. If I could leave this world knowing that I had been faithful to my calling as, as the, in the ministry and fulfill my ministry, then I could go home to glory one of these days with a, with a, with a victory shout and with a, with a clear conscience and a happy smile on my face. I want to do that tonight. Now, to be faithful, you've got to be several things. We, he didn't say be a genius. He didn't say be smart. He didn't say be intelligent or, or even witty or funny or, or uh, uh, educated. He said be faithful. 
be faithful. God, all of us can't sing, but we can all be faithful. All of us can't preach, but we can all be faithful. You can be faithful to God. Anybody can. There's no excuse for it. So I want to talk about that just a little bit tonight. And I, I want to say I, I want to be a faithful man of God to this church. I want to be a faithful because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I believe tonight that I stand right where I'm supposed to be standing. You say, how can you say that? Well, over, over years of time, it becomes clear to you what God wants for your life. And I feel sorry for people that live their whole life and never even know if they're in God's will or what it is. That's, I, I hope that you know that you're in God's will. You may, you, may, you may be a housewife that just takes care of her husband and, and, and kids and keeps the house right and lives faithful to God. That's the most important thing you can do if that's what God wants you to do. You could do nothing any greater than what God wants you to do. You may be a man who works a job every, every day and, and, and faithfully goes to church and raise his family right, you could not do anything any greater. You might uh, uh, drive a bus, you might teach a class, you might, whatever you, whatever God's give you to do. I told Brother John a minute ago that I appreciated them. They come out here, Ray told me that they worked, or he did, all day about changing that tire on that bus out there. You know, there's a lot of people who won't do stuff like that. A lot of people, they come through and they want to get in the glory and the spotlight, but changing a tire on a bus that's going to go get some Somebody that's going to come and hear the gospel that might get saved. You can't do anything any greater right then than what God's given you to do. Amen? And so tonight, I'm glad that he put me into the ministry. I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful. Uh, you, you may not have the best preacher in the world, but I want you to have one that's faithful. I want you to know you can depend on me. I want, I want you to know that I'm going to be here. And I, and I know most of you do know that. I know most of y'all say, when, when brother, when, if he ain't here, something bad and wrong. I mean, he's wrecked or somebody died or something if I'm not in my spot. Listen, that's what I want you to think. I want you to say, if brother Danny ain't up there in his spot, he's sick or dead or something, or worse than sick, worse than dead. I, 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 something bad and wrong if he's not in his spot. I want to be the man that God wants me to be for this church. Amen. I, I had somebody tell me the other day, they said, Brother Danny, I listened to one of your sermons the other day and I enjoyed it so much and that, that's, uh, I've, I've never heard you preach anybody. I said, praise God, I don't want to get worse. I don't want to get worse as I go on. I want to get better. I want to do better. I want to do more. I don't want to be satisfied. I don't want to just uh, lay down and say, all right, I've done enough for the Lord. I want to finish, brother, the race that God's given me to finish uh, with, with faithfulness with faithfulness. Amen? Amen. I want to be a Bible preacher. I want you to know when you come to this church that you're going to get the Word of God. And a man drove way, drive way, long way one time and some, I was over in Lenore somewhere and somebody stopped him and they said, uh, they said, man, you drive past 50 churches to get over there to, to, to that church. Why do you drive so far to get to that church? He said, because them 50 ain't my church. He said, that's my church. He he said, that's my pastor. He said, I want to be in my church. And that's the way I want to be. I want to be a faithful man of God. I want to rightly divide the word of truth. I want you to know when you come here that you're going to get it, brother. I mean, that you're going to get the truth. Amen? You're going to get the truth about history. You're going to get the truth about uh, the beginning. You're going to get the truth of the word of God. Don't you ever doubt. Don't you ever worry. Don't you ever say, oh no, I don't know about shining light. They're starting to use other versions of the Bible and their music's getting weird and all that. By God's grace, we ain't going down that road, y'all. We ain't going down that road. The old time religion got me saved, got you saved, and he can't improve on what God did and what God does and old fashioned Bible preaching and Holy Ghost conviction. You'll never improve on that. There's nothing in this world any better than what God can do through the preaching of a Bible believing church and preacher. Amen. You don't have to be scared young people. You don't have to be afraid at school. You say well they make fun of me at school for being a Christian. Good. Good. That's good for you. A little persecution ain't going to hurt you. A little loss once in a while ain't going to hurt you. Good for you. It's good for you. Don't you be afraid. Don't you be ashamed to stand up for what this book says. It don't matter who likes it who don't like it. 
And it may get rough before this thing's over with. It may get bad. It may cost us a lot to stand before this thing's over with. But by the grace of God, we want to stand and say, Lord, I I was faithful to that book right there. Amen. We ain't going to change it. We're going to preach it. We're not going to explain it away. We're going to preach it. We're not going to try to make it mean something it don't say. We're going to preach it. We're not going to try to make God hip and uh, a hipster so the world will accept him. We'll preach the great God of creation and the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ and exalt him and let the Holy Ghost do the same. Man, so one time, these kids went to school and they said, but Brother Danny, I went to school and they taught me evolution. And honestly, I didn't know what to say. How do I know they're not right? Well, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that. There is nothing, evolution is not true. Evolution is a lie hatched out of hell. You know what atheism is? Atheism, brother, ain't nothing in the world but a dishonest, immature, unsubstantiated, unscientific temper tantrum thrown at God by somebody who's mad because their kid died or the, uh, something, uh, something went wrong, their wife left them or something. They get mad at God and then vent all that junk. That's what Charles Darwin did. His daughter died and he couldn't figure it out and he got mad at God and invented evolution. You know, they, they laugh at us. They get on those TV talk shows and they laugh at me and you for believing the Bible. And they're those stupid Christians. Ha, ha, ha. And they get on a, like old Bill Maher. I can't stand to see that guy. I don't listen to him. I don't want, I seen his face somewhere on a magazine somewhere. But makes me want to throw up his doctrine and his spewing of hate toward God and the Bible. You know what they say? They say to somebody like me, they say, well, you haven't studied evolution in detail like we have. So you don't have a right to criticize it. You know what I say? You don't, hey, you haven't studied the Bible for 40 years like I have, and you don't have a right to criticize it. Give them their own medicine right back to them. How do they know the Bible ain't true? They don't, we, they don't know, they don't know to dis, enough to dismiss its historical scientific facts. They don't understand eschatology. They don't know what hermeneutics is. They don't know the difference between church and Hebrew history. They don't understand the seven days of creation, six days of creation, seven days of rest, and its prophetic meaning. They don't have no right to life at us and our God. They don't know what they're talking about. Amen. They say, well, they like, I've heard them get on TV and laugh and say, oh, you stupid Christians believe in talking snakes. Ha, 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 and everybody laughs their head out. You know what we say? Well, you nut atheists believe that all complex forms of life on this earth came from a dead, inanimate object that came alive by itself. Ha, 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 ha. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. I believe a snake could talk before that could happen. Don't be intimidated. Don't let them them intimidate you. One of the biggest tricks the devil's got is making fun of Christians so you young people will cower down and say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, they're laughing at us. Oh, you'll live. Grow up a little bit. Give them their own medicine. What they believe is 10,000 times crazier than what me and you believe. Amen? They laugh and make fun of us. And, and, and you know what they believe? They believe that everything came alive by itself by the swirling waters of primordial soup and must have emerged, could have, possibly, may have been. You going to believe somebody like that? Every, every other word in the book is possibly and could have and could have been and may have and stuff like that. Lord have mercy. They come up and they say, oh, you silly people. He, uh, one man said, well, how did... N- Noah got all the animals on the ark. That's right, just like the Bible said. They just wanted how to get dinosaurs on there. There's little dinosaurs, baby dinosaurs. Big ones are big, little ones are little. You know how little a little dinosaur is? Little. You know how much room was on that ark? They don't know. Next time somebody says, there's no way he could have got all them animals on the ark, ask them, how big was the ark? How many cubic feet did it contain? They say, well, I don't know, but he still couldn't got on. Ask him how many animals there was. Did you know that of all the animals in the world, 75% of the animals live in the water and didn't need to get on the ark? 
And of the 25 of the of the of the uh, 25 percent left, 75 percent of them's insects, little bitty tiny things. They really ain't that many big animals. I mean, when you get right down to it, of every kind. The Bible didn't say two of every species. It said two of every kind. Amen? They say, well, don't let them say, when they come up and say, men wrote the Bible. So, well, men wrote your textbook too. Right? Don't let them scare you. Don't back down. Don't be a smart aleck, but don't back down. Stand your ground. You're a Christian. We have God's book. It stood the test of time. They changed their books about every 100 years. You know what scientists used to believe? They used to believe the world was flat. Scientists, the Bible didn't say the world's flat. The Bible said he sits on the circle of the earth back in Isaiah. 700 years before Jesus come the first time. You don't ever have to be ashamed of believing God's word. Be faithful to it. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I'm about to take a shout and spell. I want to be a faithful man of God. Listen, brother, this old two-edged sword will handle anything them scientists got coming down the pike, buddy. The old ship of Zion, the church of Jesus, is going to sail right on, and the BBs of, dar- of, of doubt and evolution and atheism bounces off the old ship of Zion like a BB bouncing off the Titanic. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be faithful to God's Word. Second, he counted me faithful. I want to be a faithful church member. You know how you're a faithful church member? I support my church. I support my church three ways. With my time, with my tithe, and with my talent. Whatever talent I've got, let me play that little song a while ago, I'm not going to use. I ain't got much talent. But what talent I got, I'm going to try to use it to be a blessing to the church and use it for God. You don't need to learn how to play a guitar if you want to play rock and roll music. Use your talent for God. If you can sing, Lord, somebody showed me some of these girls get on there and make YouTube videos, and I think, oh, my goodness. They not only can't sing, it's horrible. And, and they're not even singing Christian songs. And I'm telling you, whatever talent you've got, use it for God. Use your tithe for your church. Amen? I started tithing when I first got saved. You say, well, it's not for new. I know, I know, I know, I know what the Bible says. Uh, a New Testament Christian under grace surely ought to give more than an Old Testament Jew under the law. If all you're giving 10%, you're a cheapskate. Lord, it's quiet in here. Y'all ought to say amen right there, y'all. Hey, if you figure yours down to the penny so you won't have to give God one more dime, you're a cheapskate. If all you're giving is 10%, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, brother. We're a New Testament Christian under the grace of God. You know what they give in the book of Acts? 100%. They sold their lands and houses and brought it all, brother. I'm telling you tonight, support it with your tithe. You say, well, preacher, I can't afford it. That's why you can't. Listen, you give God, ask her. She knows. She knows, buddy, I give my tithe and above. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you, I ain't preaching to you something that I don't do myself. I give over and above. I, when something comes up there sometime and we have to buy something and it's $20, I'll take it out of my pocket. Brother. That's a gift to the church. Amen. I don't have to say, well, I spent $13 and 92 cents on a staple gun. I want the church to reimburse me. Now, you know, if you're starving, ain't got nothing, I understand that. And there's nothing wrong with it. Lord, you don't have to be that gone stingy. Be a blessing. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And some of you, it bothers you when I preach that because you're guilty. Listen, I support my church with my tithe and with my talent and I support my church with my time. With my time. I'm going to give it time. I'll be here Sunday morning, Sunday night. I'm here for Sunday school. I want to be here for Sunday school. I want to get everything God's got for me. I don't understand people that will get up and get dressed and and, rather, and then get here at 11.30. I mean, we've been here since 10 o'clock. Get to meet. I, I see kids out there and adults sometimes standing out front. And I go out there and say, come on, y'all, come on. I run a bunch of girls, ladies, probably 20. I, tell, I run them in the other Sunday. I said, come on, y'all. And they said, we don't... I wouldn't, I wouldn't get up at 7.30 in the morning and ride a bus an hour and a half to church and then stand outside. I said, you know what this is like? 
if we all go to the steakhouse and we're all in there eating and you stand out in the parking lot. I guarantee you they wouldn't stand out in the parking lot at the steakhouse. They'd be first in line. Want that food. You know why? All thought for the body and none for the soul. I want to be faithful in my time. You know, years ago, you don't see churches do it much anymore, but when I first got saved, you men especially, and ladies too, listen to what I'm getting ready to say. When I first got saved, preachers would get up and they'd call work days. And they'd have work days at the church. And you'd have half the congregation show up for a work day. And people would come and they would clean. and I mean, they'd scrub and they, they want their church looking good. You'd see them out working in the yard and, and trimming and everything. You know, you can't hardly do that anymore. We're living in such a selfish generation. We're living in a time, I mean, you can figure out a time to go to Gatlinburg, can't you? You can figure out a time to go, oh, nothing wrong with that. I go, I go to Gatlinburg. But listen, what about giving the church some time? What about supporting the church with your time. What about if I got up here and I said, we're going to have a work day, we're going to clean, and we're going to here pretty soon, I didn't think about that, but we are. We're going to tire these old sorry pews out, and, and we're going to uh, look the ones that's broken, throw all the pieces, and, and, get, and replace some things, and fix some things. Listen, a preacher, you ought to say, you know what, preacher? God's been good to me. That's my church. I want to give some of my time. You know, some of the best times we ever had here was back when we was first remodeling this building. And we'd have 20 or 30 men in here working. Remember out there when you were cutting all these weeds off this bank out here? Lord, it would take a full-time employee to keep that bank cut down over there. Lord, it's miracle weeds over there. Uh, I wish something would happen to kill all those trees. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a blessing? And uh, they'd all blow over and fall the right way or something like that. And remember, I tell you, remember, I remember, Junior, remember when we had that, uh, that chipper, we rented that thing? Man, we had office time. We cut trees, we cut limbs, and we was feeding them in that chipper, and it was a spitting them out, uh, mulch. And you know what? We had good, I remember we was up here, and we was working on this, and we was working in here painting and everything, and we stayed in here all day and didn't even eat, and somebody went to Chick-fil-A. I'd never even meet at Chick-fil-A at that time. Maybe one time in my life, I thought that was just for teenage girls. And, uh, and I'd never been to Chick-fil-A. And somebody went and got Chick-fil-A sandwiches and brought them, and I stood right here, I remember, and eating a Chick-fil-A sandwich, and it was good because I started. And, buddy, I'll tell you what, I, I remember one time we were in here, and I thought, you know what? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You know what they do at a lot of churches? They think, well, we've got to pay somebody to do that. We've got to pay somebody to do that. We've got to pay somebody to do that. Well, you shouldn't have to hire somebody to clean the cobwebs out of the corner at God's house. You shouldn't have to do that. There's enough people here if we love and we're faithful to our church. I mentioned Brother John fixing out there. He came out here and weed eat around that whole bank. It would be nice some of you guys would help on that out here. Lord, there's enough weed you can weed eat to your your con- heart's content out here uh, to, twice a month. Easy. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to support our church. I want to be faithful to my church. Drive a bus. Help teach. People get mad at you. I know you get your feelings hurt. I do too. I, I, J. Frank Norris said something I read the other day. He's a great preacher. You learn a lot from them old preachers like that. He said he was walking down the street, and one of his men was walking with him, and some guy come by and just cussed him. And that man said, who was that preacher? He said, I don't know, probably somebody I've helped. I thought, I, you'd have to be a pastor to understand that. Sometimes the very people that you help and give money out of your pocket and church money and help and baby and pam will just stab you right in the back, buddy. First time little old something don't go, bam. I'm telling you, people, that's why I'm committed to do what I'm doing for the Lord and not for anybody else. I tell Kelly that all the time. She said, it's discouraging. I mean, you work all day on bus route, half of them don't show up, then you get here and the Sunday school teacher ain't even here, and then you get here and this and that. I mean, it don't act that way in school. You don't go to a public school and go in there and there's 15 kids in there playing and no teacher. I mean, what kind of a, what kind of a mess 
Are we running at the house of God? I mean, it's discouraging. But you know what you got to do? You got to make up your mind. I'm serving the Lord. I'm doing this for God. I'm living it for the Lord. And be a faithful man of God to your church. Quickly, I didn't know I was going to say all that. I had no idea. Y'all must have needed it. I, need, I want to be a faithful husband. To the one woman in this world can call me a husband. That's her. Y'all call me a lot of things. You'll answer for it too. But I want to be a faithful husband. He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. You know, she told me one day, Kelly told me one day, we was down praying. We had burdens. We've had some hurt, hurts lately, some things that hurt. And she said, You're, we're in this together for the long haul. I said, amen, sister. That's exactly how I feel about it. No retreats, no regrets, no turning back, no giving up. We're in it for the long haul, people. We're in this thing. You think we don't mean business? You got another thing coming, son. I mean, we're, we're in this thing. You say, well, if it key, if it key, you, I guess we'll go straight home to glory. Uh, I'm glad I'm not going to hell. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. Amen. I want to be a faithful daddy. There's three girls in this world that can call me daddy. I want to be a faithful daddy. I want my kids to know whose side daddy's on. I want my kids to know. I want to be predictable. I don't want my kids to say, well, you never know about daddy. If he, what, he's going to be there? What? I don't want that. I'm going to say, there's one thing about it. I know where my daddy's going to be on Sunday. Let your kids grow up saying, I know where my daddy's going to be. They know I ain't perfect, but I tell you one thing: they know what I'm doing. They know Carrie, bless, she's my mama. I tell everybody she's my mom. There's not one day goes by she don't call me, text me, "Where you at? What you doing?" What you doing? And I mean, she knows where I'm at every day of the year. Thank God, I ain't going to know where I'm ashamed of. Track my phone. I don't care. You know, somebody tried that on me one time. Somebody tried to get, track me on my phone when we was on the youth trip, and I laughed my head off. I thought, what a, what a weirdo, man. I mean, somebody, somebody got problems. Uh, they're like, I'm telling you tonight, I don't attract that person. I don't know. Uh, but I'm telling you, brother, I want my daughters to know daddy reads his Bible, daddy tries to live right, daddy served God, daddy will be at church Sunday. If, if they come to church one Sunday and I wasn't here, son, you talk about, They'd be dialing 911 probably because they know that I'm going to be here if I can. And the only thing going to stop me is if I can't. If your kids get up on Sunday morning and say, are we going to church? Something wrong. <laughs> Something wrong with you, bud. Amen? Lastly, I'm going to say this and I'm through. I want to do this. I want to be at war with my vices, at peace with my neighbors, and let the rest of 2017 find me a better man. I want to be faithful because he enabled me, putting me into the ministry. At war with my vices, what does that mean? Fight. Fight. If you've got to be set in sin or something in your life that you keep failing at certain area and everything like that, you know what you've got to do with that thing? You've got to fight it. If you have a tendency towards alcohol or drugs or gambling or lying or stealing or, 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 or uh, wickedness or m videos or rock music or pornography or anything, you're going to have to fight that. You fight it. You fight it. This old flesh never gives up till it's dead. This old flesh, you kill it today, it'll be right back tomorrow. That's why Paul said, I die daily. You've got to be at war with your vices. Whatever your weakness is, if it's eating all the time, if it's sleeping all the time, if it's being lazy, if it's not reading your Bible, if it's lying, stealing, whatever, be at war with it. Say, I am not going to let that run my life. By the grace of God, I'm going to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's the only way you can do it. It's the only way you can do it. It's a fight. It's a fight. Salvation's free and it's a gift. But I tell you, buddy, if you stay right with God, you're going to have a fight. That's why it calls you a soldier. You'll never hear that in the mega church. But I'm telling you, it's a fight. Be at war with your vices and let the rest of this year find you a better man. I'm thankful that he counted me faithful, putting me 
end of the ministry. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight.